what was your favorite part about the kit today? What really stood out to you? Yeah, I think the thing that stood out to me was um, probably the tuning range. Um, you know, right now for a little over a year, my go-to setup has been really big, um, like 18 inch floor tom. Here, we're at 14 inch floor tom. Um, yeah. So at first was a little like, oh, or how am I gonna find my bearings? Like, what am I gonna do? Um, all the stuff I've been playing for the past year is probably gonna not apply here because I can't get this floor tom low enough, but four or five cranks and it was low and beefy and had more presence than most 14 inch four toms I've ever played. Yeah, it was cool. Nice. There's just a lot of sweet spots like in the kit. So, you know, a lot of times the kit will sound like a certain way, like that, those drums like react in a certain way. But it's very cool that you can get like a mid range or you can get a high or low kind of pitch out of it and there's a sweet spot there and there's a sweet spot here and there. So that's what's very cool about it. So I can see how it can be very applicable on a gig when you're playing like a straight ahead jazz thing and then you play a funk gig and you can switch it or you, you know, a funk song and you can switch it down. And so I think it, it would be cool on the fly and, and you know, very actually solistically you can mess with it on the fly too, and which is very cool. So no, I really enjoy playing it. And genre hopping for sure. Cause there, there have been times where I'm going from like a brass band gig where I told you I have my high tom tuned a lot higher than it usually is so I can like imitate that timbali sound. But then in the same day, I'll be going to like a country gig that I'm just filling in for. I'm not gonna use that same like, there are no timbales yeah. in country <laughs> music as far as I've heard. Mm -hmm. So I, you could just like crank that down. You just wanna show up to your yeah. gig or to the studio and you want it to sound good, right? And I mean, that's to me, I mean, it's the simplicity of this, which is so good. Where you show up, you know, you <laughs> go down, you bring it up until it's perfect, and then, like, there you go. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, there's a reason why there's the tune bot and the drum dial and all of these things, because, like, I mean, uh, like, 99% of drummers aren't good at tuning their drums. That's right. right? Yeah. It's not like a... And they'll admit it, too. For sure, yeah. yeah. Like, no, I mean, I don't, I'm not good at tuning my <laughs> drums, you know? Like, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Make it even easier. Right for someone to just show up at their gig and like boom, this is it. It's, it's ready to go. And uh, even for people like me who feel like they do have a grasp on tuning drums, it's still nice not to have to worry about it <laughs> just once. I'd really like to know from a sound perspective what you guys think because that's honestly that was the selling point for me. This system could have worked perfectly on a kit that did not sound good and I would not have it in the store right now. But because of the fact that anywhere I put it in the store and at any place that it's tuned, it's going to sound good, it's like a guaranteed reaction from the customer. So to me, the kit has been shocking as far as like how it sounds, but I'm interested because you guys all play different kits, you play different styles, you know, different backgrounds. How do you feel about the way that the drums respond and how they sound and everything specifically? I think everybody's immediate reaction was major surprise from the kick drum sound out front. It was the Especially kick. the like, kick drum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely sounds like a 22. It, yeah. It, you brought us in here yeah. blindfolded. Be like, that is a, that is a serious. That's the next one. Oh, that's yeah. the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. And, yeah. I mean, it, like, it gets you in the chest for sure for yeah. 18. Yeah. It's impressive. And, yeah. as, you know, I mean, as, as, as you've mentioned, many times today, I mean, the fact that there's not all of these holes drilled in that shell. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that there's not all of this metal and plastic and rubber mounted to it. I mean, there's no way that it wouldn't resonate more. Like it just, it has to. That has to be what it is, man. I mean, it's hard to find a kit that doesn't have a bunch, would you say 40 less holes or yeah. something, you know? Well, if you assume there's 10 on top and 10 on bottom and there's yeah, yeah. two holes per lug, that's, that's usually like the snare drum and sometimes the kick drum or something. But I'm saying just to, just to have like a, a piece of wood that doesn't, that's solid like that, you know? Yeah. That's what I think allows it to have so many spots, you know, sweet spots in the, in the range. It's cool. Without getting too geeky and like too into this because we only have a few minutes, but there's something called a nodal point in shells, yep. which is in between oh, and, and the top and bottom yeah. lugs. It's that strip right in the middle of the drum oh, where yeah. the drum tends to resonate better if you're like putting it under a mic and you're measuring the frequencies and everything. That's where it sounds the best because it's the only part that's unmolested by hardware. Okay. Hardware chokes out every couple inches on the drum, right? So it's the only part of the drum usually ringing. With the shell that is ringing from top to bottom, 
That, that I think, is the only explanation for why this sounds so big, why it has the tuning range that it has, and why it resonates like it does. Because typically, yeah. going back to our conversation about how I, I am not the biggest fan of maple drums, and this kit kind of won me over, I think that's why. It's because it allows whatever wood it is. I mean, this could be made out of, like, uh, Baminga or walnut or birch or something, and it would still sound extraordinary for that wood, even, you know? Yeah. I think that's the reason. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Because everybody is looking for versatility. Like, every single major band right now is blending genres, right? Hip-hop is blending with jazz, and jazz is blending with rock, and all this funk fusion stuff. And you have bands like uh, Snarky Puppy covering a, a massive range of styles. And there's not a whole lot of... I mean, there, there is, but like the people coming in to buy kits right now are concerned about versatility and what tuning range the kick drum has. And they cost a lot of money. Am I going to get my money's worth if I'm playing this kind of a gig versus this kind of a gig? This is literally the only 18 I've heard in person that will sound as large as a 22, legitimately, That's true. and Definitely. be cranked up to the 18. So it's the most versatile 18 inch kick drum I've ever. And the same with the floor tom. I mean, you know, Tristan was talking about how what, it, 18 is what you usually play, yeah. right? Right. And I mean, you. Yeah, I play 18, you, like three ply. Yeah. Like, as just low and growly as you And you can. tune yeah. this 14 inch down pretty right. low. And I mean, yeah. And just, yeah. It, it sounded really yeah, good. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it did the trick, sure. exactly. In your personal situation, if someone else out there is recording videos of themselves on a daily basis, if someone else out there is playing a different club every night, sometimes on different drums every night and teaching, if somebody out there is teaching and like diving into uh, you know, their technique and what they're, what they're hearing from their drums, or if somebody's engineering a new product, I want to hear those one-off from your perspective sort of stories one last time, like 30 seconds per person. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Another big thing is just like we're talking about just tuning differently. It just makes you play differently, hear things differently. But since I'm recording every day, I only have so much time to do things. And so to invest that time to kind of deconstruct my kit and retune it and re dial it into whatever feel tuning range I'm going for is just something I don't have a lot of time to do. Yeah. So to be able to sit down at a kit and be like, oh, I'm just not feeling super inspired in this genre, in this field, to be able to spend two minutes and just tune a few knobs and be in a whole other world musically, yeah, would be great. It makes perfect sense. It removes the, the obstacle of having to take 20 minutes to create a new sound and get inspired by. Right. Yeah. No. Sure. L? I mean, I think what would be very cool about having this kit is, like you're saying, the versatility. Like, I play so many gigs where it's, you know, all right, it's a straight-ahead jazz gig. And then, you know, someone calls a funk tune. And then, you know, I have my kit tuned where it can be very, like, mid-rangey. But it'd be nice to just crank, you know, crank a couple knobs, and now it's a funk kit, you know? And then you're back to playing bebop or something, and you can crank it up. So you can sound like authentic in all the different styles. Sure. And, you know, I think that would be the coolest thing. You know, I play, most of my gigs are are very changing genres all the time, you know? It's like, oh, we're playing a dance gig. Oh, but now, you know, we're playing this kind of tune or whatever, Latin tune. Or, so it would be nice to switch it up kind of on the fly, you know? Sure. In between songs, it, ooh, it takes like 15 or 20 seconds to turn a couple knobs, and then you're, you know, at a whole different kind of tuning, so I, th I think that would be the coolest, you know. Awesome. Coolest thing. Yeah. To lower? Um, I mean, as far as finding your sound, this can be super important too, because a lot of drummers, uh, like their technical ability and their approach to the drum set is what makes them sound the way they do, but also tuning is a part of that. Even if tuning is like 10% of that, it's a part of it. Yeah. So you can mess around with your tuning system so much faster. Yeah. That way, can, like I said earlier, you're not hopping around the kit, literally running around from the front of the bass room to the back of the bass room to tune it. Like, you can just tune it right there. That always sucks in a live scenario, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when you're like on stage and like something is horribly right. wrong with the resonance yeah, yeah. side. Right, of sorry, like two, two minutes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you're like standing <laughs> over the kit. Like, yeah. we've all been yeah, 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 like, that rack oh, time for like and yeah. trying to tune at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeremy? Yeah, totally. 
Yeah, you know, as we've talked about before, I think from a musical instrument design standpoint, it's the fact that this kit does multiple things well and improves on multiple things, you know, over uh, over other products. Like, you know, for our beaters, we wanted them to sound better, look better, and feel better than other bass drum beaters on the market. And, yeah. you know, what I think Sam has done is created something that solves a problem, which is, you know, the tunability of it looks really cool and looks unique from other drum sets on the market and sounds really good you know so i mean if, if you're looking for a new drum set you know what else do you want right yeah absolutely 